Okay. Raised it yesterday. Yep. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for pointing that out. Very good. Any other questions? Deputy yes. Mayor? Sorry, it's not a, a question so much you wish, right. but I was just going to take a step back and yes. uh, and support the point you made in re response to uh, Councillor King. It is unfortunate that, that there are two different evidential figures, and I think it is about wordsmithing mm. in that sentence. And we are, I'm reminded that we are always quoting the two fastest growing cities in New Zealand, Queenstown and Hamilton. That, I believe, came from the uh, latest uh, census, and that could well be the point of evidence that uh, Hamilton's population is continuing to grow in the, in the 2013 census, Hamilton uh, uh, had the second fastest growing rate of population of all cities in New Zealand. Now, that's very strong evidence. So I'll just leave it to the wordsmiths uh, to respond. But I am conscious of the point that Councillor King raised, where you've got another document with two figures. Okay. And that removes the doubt. Agree. Clarity is important. And also, uh, for the benefit of elected members, so that we all quote the same figures and the same reference, as it might be useful to issue us with a one page on the key points from the evidential basis in relation to the facts about population growth, demographic changes and projections, and the source of that information. Um, because I think a lot of it's bandied about, but let's get the accurate stuff so that everyone says the same thing all the time. Um, because, yeah, it's, uh, we all know we're growing, but um, the, the detail's probably quite important, I think. Uh, any other questions? I just, yes, Councillor. Just one other uh, mm. small question mm. for me, Your Worship. And I just want to compliment the authors of the consultation document. Um, great little document, easy to read everything else. But on page 21, <coughs> under the heading rates, it says rates certainty is provided by continuing with an increase of 3.8% each year for existing ratepayers. The word existing ratepayers sort of concerns me a bit. Does this mean that maybe future ratepayers will be charged a different rate? Yeah, I'm with you. Why is it there? Yeah. Thank you, Councillor. Um, existing ratepayers have a 3.8% increase built in, new ratepayers of course have a very large increase in their first year as a ratepayer, so uh, what we're trying to do is differentiate between somebody that's coming in and experiencing rates for the first time against somebody that's actually already in the system. So when you're referring to a new rate pay, you're talking about a newly built house? That's correct. Alright, so when you go into a new house you're going from zero to whatever? Yeah, that's correct. Do you think that that's picky? I mean I'm with you, I, I just don't know what it meant. I'd cross it out. But do you think that that's getting just too much into the minutia? It, it's, as I understand it, Your Worship, it is important when, when we're it? dealing with the setting of the rates in particular. Oh, right. You have yeah. to ha have that kind of right. clarification. That's right. There we go, Councillor Tooman. Apparently <coughs> it's something that it makes it easier for us to understand. <coughs> yeah, I'm with you. It makes it easier for us to strike our rates. Okay. You can, right. you can see quite a number of variations there. If you went from a section only to a section with a house on, or you were only there for part of the year and the following year, the, you were rated for the full amount of the full capital value and not only part of it, that it would be more than 3.8%. Mm -hmm. OK. Uh, I just had... Um, look, it's, I guess I put on picky. Let's be picky. Um, page 27. I find the grey bland. It would be nice if you added a bit more colour. But you know, that's just visuals. Page. 27. Big, big writing. I don't know. Looks a bit dull. Just a thought. Page 27. Page 27. It's rather grey, the pie chart. The, uh, <laughs> the pie chart. Shades of grey. Shades of grey. Yeah. Yes, 50 shades of grey, <laughs> Councillor Mellon. Yep. There's only about 12 oh, shades of grey, though, in this case. Mm. Mm. Don't read trash. <laughs>
Especially if he's starring in it. We will, we will look at it, Your Worship. <laughs> Especially um, when it's on the, you know, the arts and culture and recreation side. <laughs> <laughs> the spectrum. Can I, can I suggest We've given beige. infrastructure bright colours. Yeah, yeah beige. beige. Beige would be nice. Beige. Right. We've given well, you the bright my, colours. My only comment will be we just don't want to turn it into a colour wheel as well. That's the other risk. So we'll have to find that yeah. balance between that becoming a colour wheel and... <laughs> We wanted to emphasise, in particular, the, the, the core infrastructure, transport in the waters. Right, OK. There we go. Count, uh, Chris Allen, you're out in the sunshine, you see, with your bright colours. I there. normally like Battleship Grey. But yes, he likes Battleship right. Grey, he's telling us. No, we, went with, we went with blue because it's waters. Oh, right, OK. Good. There's some branding, a brief behind it. Great. Green for fact. OK, are there any other questions, councillors, on, on this? Yes. Just, Look, just a couple, right? and they might also be picky, but on that page 27... Um, it's interesting how, and often in debates around the chamber, we we try to compare arts and culture with sport, but the sporting spend is never separated out. It seems to be locked into mm. various places like recreation, and I guess our stadia and all those other um, uh, other other costs are. Yeah, it's a good point. Are, are not so. I'm, I'm not yeah. suggesting we change this one around, but perhaps going forward. If it, if, if it is possible to pull out the, the, the spend that, the, that that council does on sporting activities so that we have got a fair comparison with what we might spend on arts and, arts and culture. Yeah. Um, and one very, very small point, which goes back to page seven, um, and you may have already picked this up. Um, this is the uh, reference at the bottom the June should have the V taken away. It's got June V. I, I believe that was corrected. Yes, it has been. Oh, yeah. Great. Thanks. <coughs> okay. Um, councillors, I just have in the rest of the document. Um, if there's no other questions. I just got. Um, just going to raise a matter. Bit. Sorry, councillor Young. Yes. Sorry. Yes. Go for it. Uh, this is the, the whole large doc number twenty-eight. Mm -hmm. uh, community support. I just wonder, housing for older people is this still relevant to be in this document? because we decided to sell the pension and housing. So the document still reflects the pension and housing activity because at this stage, Council has not made any decision on the uh, outcome of the sale process. So it still, uh, still retains relevant. the status quo. Okay, thanks. Um, I just had one other issue I wanted to raise, and that's in relation to the KPIs, and which are later, <coughs> later part of the document. And um, I will move the recommendation shortly, and I'm going to add something in about KPIs because I think they do need... Um, another review before the um, the June finalisation of the plan. So I'll, um, when I move the um, recommendation, I'll just add in a bit about KPIs. Okay. All right. Any other? No. Okay. Um, I'm going to move the recommendation on page 15, uh, and I'm going to add a J to that, and that would be that. Um, uh, Mayor, Deputy Mayor and um, the Chairs of Strategy and Policy and Finance work with the Chief Executive and Audit New Zealand to review and update uh, the KPIs and report back uh, to the June Council meeting. And the reason I'm adding that, councillors, to the recommendation is that uh, there's a lot of KPIs that uh, are statutorily required, but there are a number that relate to what we as governance require of the organisation and and I think that a lot of those uh, look pretty tired to me and I think there's a lot of them and I know that we haven't had an, an opportunity as elected members to look very closely at those. They are our mechanism for measuring the success of the delivery of um, outcomes to the community and I think that they need a bit of a review and that there's plenty of time to do that. It's not a matter uh, for the community to comment on but it's something that we um, are interested in. So. I'm suggesting by including that in that uh, the staff um, and uh, audit, because Audit New Zealand have to audit the KPIs as well, that we have a really good look at those and bring something back for discussion with the councillors and then the CEO can make some updated recommendations in June when we finalise this. So is there a seconder, the Deputy Mayor seconding this? So um, are there any speakers on this? Yes, Councillor Mount. I'd like to move an amendment. Yep. So just to be clear, what you've just done then wasn't a... You, you've, you've put out a resolution, haven't you, which includes a J? Okay. Yes, and I've added the J to it. OK. Yep. Um, yep. Uh, the amendment would simply be that paragraph C be deleted. Paragraph, paragraph, paragraph C, C be deleted, which would be handy because that means your 
J would become the I, oh. and it wouldn't take up any more well space on the page. Yes. So it's practical. It's quite yeah. good, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. One part of the business that isn't growing. Okay, second up for that amendment. Oh, Councillor King is seconding that. The councillor's clear, page 15, would be um, A through to, including my J, but C out. So, so Your Worship, I, I wonder if it's just with a comment from the CFO on, on the practical implications of, of C was to be removed? Yes. Gotcha. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Your Worship, and thank you, councillors. Um, the reason for actually proposing the amendment was the fact that we've been uh, very fortunate in being able to arrive at a slightly improved position. We're very conscious of council's uh, desire to achieve that 200% debt-to-revenue ratio as early as possible. And um, that was one of the reasons that we proposed this amendment. The implications of actually taking away this amendment is that a number of documents would then have to be updated ahead of going out for consultation, mm -hmm. including the prospective financial statements. Um, um, the auditors would probably also have to audit those again, um, or at least audit those amendments before they could be available for the community. So from that perspective, I would recommend that it actually stays in. OK. Okay, um, Jude, have we got that so people are clear on what's happening? All right, so um, I'll speak to the motion. Can we have questions? On, on what you just heard? Yeah. Yes, certainly. Yeah. By C being removed, does that mean that the resolution passed earlier saying 2019 <coughs> would stand? No, the, it would be 2021, Councillor, which is the original um, resolution that was passed at the budget meeting of the 25th of February. And the last long-term plan was what date? 2019. I think the important point to note here is that Council have already resolved that the debt to revenue ratio will be achieved by 2021. This, the effect of this resolution is to actually bring it back to 2020, so it actually is a favourable resolution. Um, so and actually, by, by removing it, you're actually taking it back to 2021, which of course does still have consequential impacts for the documents, but it's actually a less favourable position than the position that has been So hang on. Here. Sorry. Okay. Um, my my <clears throat> rationale for that was to take us back to the existing financial strategy. That wouldn't achieve it, Councillor Mallett. The existing financial strategy, the recommendation on the 25th of February was to um, move the debt to revenue ratio to 200% by 2021. So that was making it unfavourable when the existing financial strategy was 2019. This recommendation here, this amendment to that financial strategy from the 25th of February is to bring it back a year, make it more favourable from 2021 to 20. So by removing that, you're effectively making pushing the debt to revenue ratio out a year rather than I think your intent is to bring okay, it in. Okay, so a my year. intent was to uh, go back to the strategy, financial strategy we had uh, at the start of this term. That's right, and that, you're, you're that action of removing that, that line doesn't achieve that. Can I please just um, make a comment here? Um, <clears throat> just to reinforce the, the comments made from um, um, Paul, the CFO. Uh, this isn't if your intent, we'll get the wording right mm. for your amendment, if your intent is to achieve the 2019 200%, um, that's not a small task in terms of the documents that are in front of you. And I know bureaucracy shouldn't be an excuse mm -hmm. for deriving decision, but I'm making it very clear. There is a real risk behind this that it takes a, a, a number of days to adjust the financial strategy, a number of days to update the consultation document. Um, the auditors would have to re-review. There's a number of steps involved with that. It does put us under significant pressure in terms of our available time for consultation, and it does put us under significant pressure in terms of our ability to adopt our consultation document, sorry, our final document in time for the new financial year, and consequently does place risk on our ability to rate, strike our rates. These, I'm not scaremongering, these are the facts. What I'm suggesting, Councillor Mallett, is that um, this document is drafted in a such a way as to encourage feedback from the community about actually reducing our spend, and that's the way it's been worded, that we actually let it go out to the community in the way it is written now, 
um, to achieve a degree of consultation, give an opportunity for you to have your views reaffirmed by the community, and that you make that recommendation as part of the final adoption of the consul uh, of the 10-year plan in um, June when we do that. There will also be a deliberation meeting before then when you can actually hear the themes from the community come forward as well. But, but, and thank you for your clarity there. Based on what you just said, then any adjustment to, to this document is going to, whether it's taking a dollar out, $5 million out, or putting $5 million in, it's going to... Yep. So that, what that, saying, that one's a reasonably big one. Um, yeah. That would require us to achieve that. We would effectively have to... Cause that's the other information. To achieve that, um, and I've had Paul do some rough numbers, so these companies would have to effectively defer the rototuna growth um, projects and Which flows through to a whole lot of other yeah, things. 2016, 2017, 2018, 2019, defer that out beyond 2019. Um, that would then have a significant impact on the formulation of the underlying numbers and so forth. So um, it's not a small feat. I know your intent, mm. I understand that very clearly, um, but I'm just making it very clear that this is um, effectively a amendment that has huge consequences <coughs> that we really need to make sure that Council is fully aware of what that means in the consensus. My recommendation? Um, I strongly encourage you. Could to I just have a second with my seconder? Second with your seconder, absolutely. <laughs> um, oh, well, that's well, well I guess I guess the point is that, um, irrespective of whether this, and I don't think there will be support for this amendment anyway. But um, the whole thing, and I, I take your point. This is going out to consultation, so this whole thing can be raised again, and in, in the feedback from the community, etc., gives you time. But you're saying you're urging us to not do it because it throws a real spanner in the works, doesn't yeah, it? It throws a spanner in the works, which is not a reason in itself, but the, re the, the well, I guess it, 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 is, it is reason. But it's an acceptable reason if there is a chance to address this yeah. in a proper, in a more and timely way in the well, future. I firmly believe the way this document is, doc is, is structured, the one issue is about affordability, yeah. and that's one issue you're really debating right now, is ratepayer yeah. affordability. And I think if it goes out to the community in its current format, you'll elicit responses that are, potentially could sway your views okay. or could reinforce your views, okay. and I think the better time to handle that is yeah. post consultation. Despite it means that we now have a J, I'm happy to withdraw the amendment. Right, so we've got C's back in, we're not having an amendment. Can I just ask a question about the comments that yes. C uh, has just made? What sort of cost uh, to the organisation would be this reviewed um, financial planning and strategy, etc., if the amendment were to go through? I don't understand this through the cost. It would, it would mean that we'd have to find an additional um, number of projects to remove from our capital program to bring our capital program by down. How much, Paul, was it? Um, Sorry, I mean, Paul, it was at no, two it's 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 meaning, cost. Meaning time cost time to the organisation. Yeah, like I mean, you'd have to. Staff costs. Presumably, there's an order to cost and staff oh, costs. Um, or... a, a, absolutely. Be, um, we, we worked out roughly for any change at this stage, fundamentally, there's. Um, two to three weeks worth of work, um, there's auditor uh, review. But there's the unknown risk that I'm more concerned about is ensuring that we have a doc an adopted document, where whatever that looks like, um, in time for us to strike our rates, which has a bigger cost if we don't. So I'm just being very methodical in terms of what the impacts are from a risk point of view in that respect. Yeah, so you wouldn't have any idea what the internal cost might be? No, just okay. three weeks worth of work of staff, a, a significant number of staff. I think the big risk is that we miss a timeline. Is that That's right? the yeah. bigger risk I'm trying to Or a mistake is made because yep. stuff just doesn't get reviewed properly. That's right. All right, so we don't have an amendment now. So, councillors, we have the motion. I'll speak briefly to the, uh, to the motion. Um, and I guess it, it speaks on about the long journey. Um, I think it's been, this uh, document's been a year in the making, and I think what's got to be really clear here <coughs> is it is produced to elicit feedback from those who are interested to give feedback about where um, the direction the, the council's taking the city, what direction we're taking it in, and the budget that we're putting around that to deliver those things. Uh, so. I think, I think that people need to understand that really clearly. So the document's got to speak clearly to the public about what the issues are and what the proposed decisions are. And I think when you read this document, I think it's really clear. It'll be very clear to the public what we're asking them about. Um, the second thing I'd say is um, I've had an opportunity, because we are... Uh, the last, or near, I would say we are the last council to sign off on this 10-year plan in New Zealand. I've had an opportunity to look at what other councils around New Zealand are doing. 
And I do want to um, acknowledge the past work that has been done over the last three or four years by a number of councillors who are sitting at this table and some of the new councillors as well in making some of the decisions that have enabled us to create a budget and a document that looks like this. Because I can assure you there are many councils around New Zealand who actually aren't in that position, who, know, who have spent their budget time with a sharp pencil and sending bad news, and we're not in that position. So the work that's been done in the past has enabled us to present this to the city. There might be some difference of opinion around this table about this budget. I accept that, um, and that's actually quite healthy, mm. because when we go to the public, it's good to see that we ourselves have different views about how much budget should be allocated where. So I'm very comfortable with that. But um, what I would say is, in my short time here, the evidential analysis and the assumptions on which this budget are based are, in my view, the most robust and strongest they've ever been in the creation of a budget out of this council. And I say that because this council has been very vigilant about requesting and requiring evidential analysis and basis for our decision making. So while we, while we might not agree on the allocation, I'm very comfortable with the evidential basis of our decision making and that to me is very, very important. And that speaks to the growth the asset management plans, the maintaining what we've got when we should be doing it. And I uh, know that Blair's been here long enough to know that has not always been the case in the past at all. And I think that is critical that we do that because that is the transparency that the ratepayer requires. And the other thing I would say is for me, and I think for many councillors here today, one of the most critical things we can do for this city is balance the books. It's simple. In your own house, you don't uh, borrow on the credit card to pay for your lunch, and we shouldn't run the city like that. And once we get to a balanced book position, it is so much easier to manage the way we manage this business and how we spend the money. And that, to me, is the number one critical issue. Yes, it's uh, to deliver to the growing city and to maintain our assets at the optimum time. Yes, we've gone from 2019 to 2020. In the scheme of things and in everything else that we are delivering to the city, in my view, that is a matter I'm very comfortable with. And I know um, that the Chair of Finance is also comfortable with that. Uh, so I want to thank the staff who've worked very hard on this. I do want to thank the finance staff because we've, you know, toed and froed on a lot of things and it's required people to go back, remodel, recheck, chuck it in, chuck it out, you know. And uh, Paul, who's come in the 11th hour as a locum and picked it all up, thank you for that. Um, and there's some strategy people sitting behind Paul, um, Sarah and Aaron, who I know have worked very hard. And, and we've got our other people there as well. And um, Blair is the lead of that team. They've worked very hard to bring this together and, I must say, respond to our every wish. Uh, but I, I honestly think that this document, whatever your views, is sufficiently clear for people to express a view. And if they're interested to do one, they can tell us. Um, and if they're not, I'm taking that as a signal that we've got it right. Uh, so thanks very much, everyone, for your involvement in this. All right, anyone else want to speak? Councillor King? I'm speaking against the recommendations and against the 10-year plan. Um, in July 2014, the annual plan was released, which I understand all members in this room voted for. So that was the plan. It was nine months ago. There you all are there in the photo. Um, nine months ago, we, we said that was the plan. Um, that includes uh, you, Leo, Councillor Leo Tuman, Councillor Philip Young, and Councillor Rob Pascoe, who 
were new to the council to this council, but who recently changed their minds about this plan that they voted on 12 months ago. The, um, the plan had scraps in it. And these graphs show go out to 2022, and these graphs show each year debt reducing, not increasing, and the debt um, coming down to about 380 million um, between now and 2022. You're about to vote on a draft plan where the debt by 2024 will be nearly 500 million dollars. I don't think that's $100 million more than where we are today. I don't think the city's ever voted in $100 million extra into a long-term plan over a one-year period. And more than that, nine months ago, you were quite comfortable to vote for the plan that showed the debt coming down to $380 million. Uh, $100 million is more than you spent than we spent on Claudelands. It's two to three times what we spent on the V8s. Uh, Councillor Tooman, Councillor Yong, and Councillor Pascoe, as new councils, you didn't promise to hold the rates down as part of your election campaigns. But I remind you that the plan you approved nine months ago, that, that since then there hasn't been new, new information. The information that is available today that we're working off is the same information that was available nine months ago. But the election promises from the election just gone were still ringing in the incumbent's staff, in the incumbent's ears and the staff's ears. Deputy Mayor Gordon Chesterman stated in his election campaign we have slashed debt in the 10 year plan from 883 million to 430 million. That 10 year plan has still got until 2022 to run. Councillor Gordon Chessman has asked me to apologise for making these very serious allegations about breaking his election promises. But his election promises are here, they're in the paper, and they're approved by Gordon Chessman. <coughs> Margaret Forsyth, Councillor Margaret Forsyth, also promised to reduce city debt in her campaign advertising. She has asked me why I don't accept the council's draft decision on the plan. This is still a draft document and members can be convinced to change their minds. This is part of the process and members are allowed to talk to the public in whichever way they feel is most suitable to get the message across of what has happened. This is about reminding members what they promised the public 18 months ago when they were asking the public for their vote. Mayor Julie Hardacre also clearly promised to hold rates and debts in, all her, in, in her election advertising. It's time to stop the financial rot. We have met, had many chances to make this budget work and comply with our word and our promises. This is another chance today. We could agree today to push Rotatuna and PEC projects like the River Plan, the Gardens, Hamilton Gardens, the Recycling Rubbish, the IS Mobility Services and the renewing of H3 out for three years, three <coughs> to four years, and we would then stay within the parameters of what we agreed on nine months ago. By voting for this draft document, we are agreeing to increase debt to above the last plan by about $100 million. And for some of you, breaking your word and your election promises. What that tells me is that you can't possibly have integrity or a conscience. Okay, any other speakers? I'm sorry, Your Worship. Uh, did I hear the councillor correctly when he said uh, that, uh, uh, that uh, we lacked integrity? Yes. Is that what he said? Do you want to repeat what you said, Councillor King? I said what that tells me, so referring to your breaking of your election promises, is that you cannot possibly have integrity or conscience. 
All right, any other speakers for or against? Councillor O'Leary. Thank you. Um, I'm going to be speaking uh, for the uh, motion. Mm -hmm. Over the Christmas holidays, I read this fascinating, uh, humorous article that was written by a freelance writer to the Waikato Times. And uh, it went through all of the current members of council and who we were and gave us sort of character uh, pieces, I guess, to play out in this story. It was, it was quite humorous. Um, I was described as a henchwoman, or henchman, I think it was, and never really uh, seen myself in the political uh, career that I've had over the eight years as a, as a hench woman, person, whatever. Um, but the one thing I do know that uh, in my experience over the years of council uh, is I know uh, hard work when I see it. And I do know integrity, Councillor King, when I see it. And uh, I believe that um, the people around this table and in this room that I hold in high esteem and that have uh, worked hard and influenced this 10-year budget have integrity and have conscience. And the other thing that I know about those particular people are they debate and convince colleagues on the issues. They don't look through election papers and uh, attack the, the, the man or the woman. Uh, they, they debate the issues and they fight for the issues and what's right for the city. That's what I know. Uh, th the other interesting thing is through this uh, journey, and um, I uh, strongly support the Mayor on her, uh, what she said about the team, the CE, um, Blair, your team, um, finance department, and, and all the staff that have worked incredibly uh, long and uh, difficult hours getting to where we are today. Uh, through this journey, we've had not only personal attacks on some of the members around the table, but um, talk of the election report. And what I know about that election report is, or the pre-election report, is it, it's, a, it's a, a moment in time. The mayor and the elected members have nothing to do with it. It's a statement from the CEO. And the purpose of that, under the Act, is to inform the public to have a conversation. It's not drawing a line in the sand and saying this is what we're going to do for the next 10 years. It's an informative document about where council's been and the journey that they may go on. It's a point in time, that's all it is. The other thing that I know that has been brought up in this chamber through this journey is that long-term plans, and you know, I actually agree, long-term plan is a 10-year is a plan, but the Act says that it's a th basically it's a three-year plan, that that 10-year plan is active for year one, year two and year three. And then at year three, territorial authorities have to do a new 10-year plan or another 10-year plan. It's a reset. That is what the Act says. So you can't decide that we should abide by 2012 or the 2006 or possibly the 2000 and, I think the 2006 one, Councillor Mallet was on, well, well why, why don't we pick that one then? Why have you decided to pick 2012? You've had well over 12 months to convince this, the people around this table, rather than attacking them personally about the issues that you've raised and to get into the, the debate. Um, we, quite uh, generously and I think in the, in the spirit of, of of being a team, we uh, ended up last year, just before, just before Christmas, um, postponing. Even though some of us who voted at that point for the draft budget, the Mayor did the right thing by the team and postponed that decision. You lost that decision, but that was the right thing to do at the time. So you've had all that time to convince the people in this chamber and that make the decisions to see it your way, rather than pulling out election uh, pamphlets and attacking the person and telling the people around this table, some who have been there a lot longer than I have, that we lack integrity and conscience. Um, I have never attacked a member in my eight years personally, and I don't intend to, um, but I strongly support this 
draft budget and it's now time for the public to have their say. Okay. Any other speakers for or against? Yes, Councillor Pesco. Yes. <coughs> Your Worship, I'd like to speak in, in favour of the, um, of the motion. Um, I strongly disagree, and I have said this in the chamber before, of linking the pre-election report to this long-term plan. In my view, the pre-election report is a summary of the long-term plan agreed to by the last council. And as Councillor O'Leary has just pointed out, it is released to the public as, as, a, as an information document to give the direction of travel that that council has previously been on. The mandate that the residents gave this council is to lead the city. And good leadership requires adaptability and aligning objectives to changing circumstances. We agreed as a group of councillors at the beginning of our term to what's known now as the Hamilton Plan, and that plan is summarised on pages 9 and 10. This plan included 10 objectives, particularly including providing outstanding infrastructure, becoming a third city economy, affordable housing, etc. If we are to live to the plan, then we must show the leadership that we promised the residents when they selected us from the 50 plus candidates who put their name forward to seek office at the last election. What I do like about this plan now is that not only does it, does it um, uh, indicate to the public uh, a desired uh, plan of travel that this council is recommending, but it also gives two option, two alternatives. And those two alternatives should fit into the, um, uh, the current mindset of those councillors who might not support um, this motion. And that is it gives the city, the residents of the city, an opportunity to come back and say, no, we don't want the growth or we want it to happen on a much slower basis. So that's one of the options. And the second option is, hey, we would like this to happen a lot, a lot faster. So, um, so maybe redo the figures so that we can get the growth happening to fit the, the way that the city is, or, or the speed at which the city might grow over the next 25 years. I also disagree with uh, Councillor King's comment, and I've just selected this out from where he mentioned that we are currently using the same information that we had uh, when we agreed on the annual plan last year. And just very quickly, the, the, the um, report that we referred to earlier on from the University of Waikato, um, that wasn't released until June 2014, so we would not have had that document setting out population growth when we um, uh, set and, and decided on last year's annual plan. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Any other speakers for or against? Could I just point out that had we had the document, we would have seen that it was actually lower than what we were budgeting on, not higher. So okay. any other for or against? No? Okay. Oh, just very quickly. Okay. Just very quickly, and uh, I would reiterate uh, Councillor O'Leary's comments. Spoke very well. Um, I'm going to stick to the resolution and the plan. It's uh, not my style to... Uh, play the man, I'd rather play the ball, the ball in this case being our uh, draft 10 year plan document to go out to consultation. So uh, I indeed also share uh, or have my view about uh, councillors' levels of integrity and um, et cetera, et cetera, but I believe it's our job. It's not only in the way, uh, uh, the decisions we make, it's the way we behave and the examples that we set as leaders of the city. That's all I have to say. Okay, thank you. Right, uh, we might go to the board. So people are clear on what we're voting on. Can you reset it? Thanks, it's not working right. Yeah. Okay. We need a, need a new one of these, don't we? Mm. Did you get that, Jude? Sure, sure. No, it does. Yeah. Oh. Do it again. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Need to <laughs> 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 oh, Thank you. 
carried seven votes, four and three against. Thank you. Right, uh, that's the end of the open agenda. Right, thank you. Councillors, um, I'll just move to go into the public excluded, seconded by the deputy <laughs> member. All those in favour? Aye, yes, carried, thanks. Your Worship. Julie.